Continue. That's like, what, what, did something scare you? Did you hear something? Yeah. It's freezing in here, but, you know, I can't tell. Whoa! I hope to God that was them. What? I just want her to... <sighs> Not sure what I saw. It looked like a, some kind of a shadow that came out from back down the way there. Little kid, but, you know, I'm afraid. Well, I heard it the one time, because we're I was over here. Okay, so we can all confirm that we heard the whistle. So if you're like yes. a little boy... You would and you were talking they, about the little boy. Yeah, but yes. they're little boys... Oh, and there it was again. Yeah. Freaking out. She is an incredible sight to see tied up to Pier 1 in Baltimore Harbor, the USS Constellation. Now many believe the ship is haunted and we're going to get to those ghost stories in a minute. First we need a history lesson. The USS Constellation was born back in 1854, constructed of materials that were salvaged from the frigate USS Constellation, which sailed the seas in the late 1700s to early 1800s. This new version of the majestic ship stretches 199 feet long, 43 feet across. The Constellation was armed with 16 cannons and more than a dozen large pounder mounted guns that could sink an enemy vessel on command from the captain. The first captain of the Constellation, Captain Charles H. Bell. Most famous for being the very last sail powered and uh, all wooden warship ever commissioned by the U.S. Navy. That's in 1855 that she entered service. Um, all sail powered and all wooden means she's not a very effective warship for very long, but they do still uh, put her to use in blockade squadrons for the first few years of her life. That was her big service when she was still really in active service. The next person in charge of the Constellation, Captain Thomas Dornan. The ship took on an important role in the waters off Africa. What we're most proud of in her service, uh, we always like to mention that she did serve in the Africa Squadron from 1859 to 1861. Um, while we do have slavery still in the country until uh, 1865, it is illegal to participate in the transatlantic slave trade. That is decreed by both us and Great Britain at that time. Uh, so we are off the coast of West Africa along with British and French ships. We are just looking for slavers coming out of the Congo River, trying to capture their ships and return the captives to the continent. Uh, that goes until the outbreak of the Civil War. Then, Captain Henry Thatcher took over the helm of the Constellation. After the Civil War, she is part of a Mediterranean blockade to keep the southern states from trading with Europe. Soon after, the Constellation's days of fighting on the ocean, well, they were done. She is more or less a training vessel up until uh, World War II. It's actually the very last time that she has any kind of significant role in the Navy. Uh, during that time, while she is up in, uh, at that point, Rhode Island at a different naval training facility, uh, she is made the vice flagship of the Atlantic Fleet because even though she's not actually going out to the lines, there were enough high-ranking admirals and other officers in the Navy that were serving aboard here as a sort of strategic headquarters. Uh, it was considered for a brief time the full flagship and then for the rest of the war the vice flagship of the Atlantic Fleet. Uh, that wraps up in 1945. The constellation eventually ends up here in Baltimore Harbor as a museum. Supposedly, she has some ghostly sailors who are still aboard. So we run overnights here with Boy Scouts on the weekends. Uh, we wake them up in the morning around 6 a.m. They've all been staying in the hammocks down here. Uh, so a few months back this last summer, um, my girlfriend at the time, she is uh, coming down to turn on the electrical room over there in the morning. We call the Scouts up. Um, when she comes down those stairs, she's seeing a slight kind of hazy light out of the corner of her eye uh, in this general area here in the middle of the hammocks. Uh, she looks towards it. The light goes away as she looks towards it, but she does see one hammock still swaying in the middle. Um, one of the hammocks that did not have anyone currently sleeping in it. Uh, all the ones that did have people sleeping in it were dead still. Uh, she very promptly ran right on back up to the top deck and did not see anything else. Uh, she did not waste any time getting on up there. To find out if this grand old ship was really haunted, the Unexplained Cases team joined forces with the Maryland Paranormal Research Group to search out sailors who are now spirits haunting the constellation. 
The team brought aboard an array of high-tech visual and audio equipment. Hiram Henderson is the group's leader. Because of the history of, of apparition sightings on the on the vessel going back to 1863, um, yeah, we're going to focus more on the visual and we're going to be using um, infrared cameras. We're also going to be using a structured light um, sensor system. And we're also going to use uh, thermal um, um, imaging as well. So we'll have a, a direct voice stage. We'll have a, a direct radio voice stage slash experimental stage. And we'll plug in, plug into it things like a hydrophone. We'll, we'll plug in solar panels because you can get electronic voice phenomena from the demodulation of light. We'll also plug in um, um, an electromagnetic induction sensor. And these are basically magnets and coils. but. Uh, but the sensors that we have are optimized to listen to voice frequency. So below deck we went to search out the unexplained, and it didn't take long for one member of the Maryland Paranormal Research Group to run into what she believed to be a ghost. It's freezing in here, but you know, I can't tell. Whoa! I hope to God that was them. What? I just want her to. Well, you certainly gave me a heart attack, if nothing else. <laughs> Sweet mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> that, was in, that was intense. You didn't hear that? I, I, I did. <laughs> this happened just moments after we began a full sweep of the constellation. Well, we were all on edge, but we had to push forward and went down to the lower deck. But something paranormal continued to follow us. Are you kidding? What? Well, I just drained your battery, didn't I? How the hell? I mean, I just put this in. Huh. Oh, and... Oh, now oh. it's dead. Yeah. All right, we're going to do a spirit box session. We're still here on the Constellation. Uh, we're going to use this device. Uh, it creates this white noise where spirits are supposedly able to use it to communicate with us. And we're going to ask some questions and uh, hopefully get some answers here. Is there anybody here with us right now? But we got no responses. The same for our digital audio recorder. So we continued further down into the belly of the constellation and the energy seemed to grow darker. At one point, in fact, I felt like it was surrounding us. There are stories of a young boy who was murdered in this area. So was it him reaching out to us? Because we were here. So you're standing about right there. Yeah, yeah standing right about <coughs> here, and then it just feels this the, just feels nasty. the board. You can feel the board move, and it just I could just I could hear it was like somebody was just like that walking kind of right there in front of us. And you weren't moving because you would just hit your head. Mm -hmm. And I was. You were not moving, and it was like it was like something like right here. And then yeah. it just stopped. And that was it. Weird. Mm -hmm. But yes. all on the same level. Yes. Yeah, it's all, and like you said earlier, this is yeah. the, really the most. And to be more accurate, I think I had stopped right here since I was. Bashed your head in. Was, well, was almost about to, and I'm like, I'm stopping before that's, that's I what continue. I was, I was like, what, what, did something scare you? You hear something? Yeah. Just creaking. This would certainly have the most energy, the oldest part, the most original part of the ship. I mean, this yeah. would, you would think, while everything else has been mostly restored, especially those first, what, the, the two top decks, well, definitely the top deck. It's so quiet down here that if you hear something, you know, it's pretty, I think it'd be pretty apparent, you know? That's it. Yeah. No, that's what, I mean, it felt, it felt vibration. And I felt like there's footsteps literally right there. And for me to say that, that takes a lot. Because a lot of times I think it's somebody's imagination. And you kind of stopped. So I thought maybe you felt it too. And, then, and she didn't go. And then all of a sudden, it's like right in front of us. Sort of like, I could feel the boards like moving like somebody is basically walking. We set up a mel meter, which measures changes in the electromagnetic field. We also let one of our cameras run to try and catch something paranormal. It didn't take long before we got a hit.
The EMF spikes were compelling evidence we captured on video. Was it the young sailor who was killed? Well, there's really no way to tell. This has a different, yeah, I was going to say, this is different than out there. Yeah, pretty much so. This actually almost feels oh, comforting. Ooh, weird. Mm hmm. Like, I'm not oh, comfortable weird. standing in front of that open, but it feels. Chills. Oof. But you felt that too, right? That it felt more comfortable here, all of a sudden? Yeah, almost like that peaceful. Was creepy. Almost peaceful. Yeah. I mean, actually, peaceful. That's oh, it's gotten really freaking cold all of a sudden. Real cold. Okay, that's like an inner bone one. Mmm. Ugh. Yeah, I got it going on, too. But you felt that, too, when you first walked in here. It was like, hmm, nice. Yeah. I'm glad we're in here. It's kind of comforting. Yeah, yeah. A little warmer. Uh-huh. Yeah, now it's gone. Yeah, totally. Weird. And the chills are, have been hanging around since I first yeah. reported them. Oh, yeah, totally not good. Let's try. Let's try this again. Let's see if this happens again. Yeah, totally gross right here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Not very comfortable. Uh huh. That's me. Okay. Loose boards. Loose boards. And it's ugly, ugly. Yeah. And then. Is it here? And that same feeling. Gone. Oh, this God. is this is this this is like out there. It's not even warm in here now. Yeah. This is that's staying totally the same. That's wild. Yeah. Ooh, I got the creeps. Ugh. <laughs> I'm totally creeped out. Ugh. Oh. Wow. So it's it's oh, so it's totally like totally creeped out. What was there that was Weird. like chilling and having a okay time, and what pushed it out? Oh, try not to be freaked out. That was weird. Okay, now that's what I was about to say. Did you hear the whistle? I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I'm seeing things that are up there. Again? No. No, I did not. I hit I accidentally hit this thing, which I'm trying to turn it off. Is it this one right here? Pull it off. No, I'm I'm over here seeing people that are not here. I'm a little busy right now. Okay. So Mike and I definitely heard whistling at least two or three times here. And you don't think it was up in the... He's going to go find out. But, I, you know, he's like, I don't see them whistling. I think he's a little kid, but, you know, I can be crazy. I'm crazy. Well, I heard it the one time because we're I was over here. Okay, so we can all confirm that we heard the whistling. So if you're like yes. a little boy... You would go. And you were talking they, about the little boy. Yeah, but yes. they're little boys, little boys, little boys... 
Little boys. Little boys. Oh, there it was again. I'm freaking out. I got the chills, the man. I got the whole nine yards going here. Kind of, uh, say your name, did it? Sound like it? Yeah, it did. Sound like you said your name. Yeah, it said Mark. And you know, I'm a huge skeptic of Mark. I heard that. That's why I was like, yeah. it's like it, maybe they're like, hey, pay attention to us and not yeah. them. Okay, I was picking up on you with your messmates, and the one guy was, which was John Martin, was different. It said John. It just said John. Yeah. All right, what else are you going to tell me? He wants feedbacking. Yeah. Massive amounts of feedback. Where'd that be from? Is that coming from here? It is clearly coming from this. The feedback? Yeah. Higher pitch. Are we, are we in the line or something? And gone. Ooh, that was, ow, <laughs> that really hurt. Oh, and then I, as I was, uh, after the thing went off and I was asking questions, the weirdest now. sound, weird sound. Sweet. Okay. And I caught it. I know I got it on my, my uh, voice recorder. It was, it was like a high pitched sort of whistle that went on and off. But that's it, what we were hearing we upstairs. Heard it upstairs. But it kept staying and yeah, it, was it was like, like yeah. it was like right here. It was here. Yeah, it was down here. And there's nothing down here that can make that sound. No. Nothing. I always thought it was like some kind of like steam pipe or you know something but I mean there's nothing like that. Was that high that high pitched whistle? Mm. We were like, ah, it's feedback. Yeah. It sounded like feedback. It sounded just like would feedback. You, would you describe it as feedback? Yeah, I, just something like that. Did you have a timer on your camera? Uh, well, it just it, it goes or whatever. Like a, there's a like a time code as it rolls. No, 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 no. Does it shut sure. off? Oh, they killed the battery probably. Because I was standing there with. Yeah. I, I was doing a. Right. Yeah. I was Did doing, it move at all with the ball or? No, but I, I went up. And I got this like really extreme chill, and I'm standing there like like something was there. Really? And I walked up and I had my voice recorder, I was asking questions, and the camera went <laughs> off. Huh. Might have been trying to use the well drain the battery. So I stayed. A little bit of dust, but good golly, it's um, it's like looking down a mine shaft. That's an interesting distortion. No. It just came out of nowhere. Just like a really yeah. stabbing pain right behind, like right behind the ears. What were we, we were talking about? What uh, going down? Going down there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe something's like, don't come down here. Yeah, maybe. That was your fault. Go ahead. Good luck. Come on. Oh, man. Lucky. They say you're number one. Do you, do you ever have that at all? Does that no? No. Really? Uh oh. Yeah. Ah. Oh. So like, we got cold down here. Is that just yeah. the air? It got super we got cold. Really cold down here. Yeah, it's pretty cold. That's what's trying to see the ball. It's like ball. cold, cold. Mm. 
Somebody was kind of like coming up and, or like a headache type thing, or headache, like total, like stabbing, cramping pains, like right behind. And the we're ears. talking about the kid and right. just kind of the yeah. tough life going downstairs. Yeah. Sort of like, cause we, yeah, cause we said, hey, let's go. We can go walk in the very bottom of the boat. Yeah. And it was almost like somebody was saying, no, we don't want you to come down there, and that's and just totally out of the blue. Yeah. Boat, just, it was like a warning. Yeah, could have been because I don't, I don't really feel much right now. Walking the USS Constellation, you can't help getting caught up in the history of this beautiful ship. Every board you walk over, stair you climb, there's a good chance you could come in contact with a ghost who remains on duty, protecting the place they called home on the sea. Just across from the Constellation in Baltimore Harbor, another very famous vessel that is supposedly haunted too. It's the USS Torsk submarine. The USS Torsk uh, is our World War II era Tench class submarine here at Historic Ships in Baltimore. Uh, Tench class submarines classify pretty much all the subs being produced in the United States during World War II. Uh, this one in particular, she was originally commissioned in December of 1944. That's when she entered service. Uh, towards the end of the war, mostly at that point we were concerned with uh, in the Navy, the Pacific uh, Theater, and that is where she serves both of her deployments. During that second deployment, she gets her big claim to fame uh, as a ship. She is off the coast of Okinawa a few days prior to VJ Day when hostilities more or less end uh, in the Pacific, and she sinks two Japanese sea frigates off the coast there. Uh, They're not particularly significant targets at the time, but they end up being the very last two ships that any U.S. naval vessel fires on or sinks during World War II. The Torsk was armed with 10 21-inch torpedo tubes, six in the bow, four in the stern. The Torsk was stocked with 28 torpedoes that could be used to sink enemy ships. Life on a submarine, well, it was challenging. The Torsk was underwater for long stretches of time, and you can see the sub isn't exactly spacious. Yeah, pretty hard to find a spot to relax, especially during lights out. Sadly, the sailors of the Torsk also had to deal with the tragedy. Uh, one of the more notable things to happen before her service started, when they were preparing to head out in late 1944, early 1945, uh, we have seaman Joseph Grant Snow. Uh, he is sadly uh, the only person to ever perish on the ship. He is uh, one of the scouts during a training exercise. For whatever reason, he doesn't get down below when the call to dive goes down. Uh, at that time, they wore harnesses while they were on the top deck of the ship to prevent from falling over. Our best guess is that he was not able to get his harness off in time. Someone else takes his place down below, and so they're unable to tell that he hasn't made it down. And so Sally, by the time they came back up to surface, uh, he was lost to the waters in the bay and, and the mouth of the Atlantic. Uh, he's never been found. That is the only person ever pass away during service at the USS Torsk. The Torsk eventually would become a training vessel, racking up 12,000 dives until 1968, which is the recorded naval record for any ship. Then, the Torsk made its way to Baltimore Harbor to become a museum like its neighbor, the USS Constellation. And just like the Constellation, the Torsk is said to be haunted. So we teamed up again with our friends from the Maryland Paranormal Research Group to determine if there is something paranormal on the sub. Team leader Hiram Henderson explains the science behind the audio evidence we hope to gather. And then another staple method we use is called the direct voice method. Another way of saying that is the microphone method. And there, um, we're using preamplifiers, mixers. We're also using equal, an equalizer, um, a graphic e equalizer or EQ. And we're also using a compressor. And um, what that does is, is that it takes very quiet sounds and it amplifies them. And, and sounds that are loud, it lowers um, their volume and it balances the dynamic range in between. The integration of all of that equipment, the mix of it all, I think enables you to hear um, pretty realistic, electronic voice phenomena. This was just some of the equipment brought below deck to try and find the spirits of the Torsk. While the team monitored their machines, one investigator possibly saw a ghostly sailor. So Sam was sitting here earlier when we were all in this room and he is, he's, a, he's very skeptical. And uh, you know, we're, nobody else was up here and he said, you know, I, I, saw, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. And he said that he saw a shadow move. He saw then pass, you see how the shine was on the floor in there? He saw the light change, like somebody cut across oh, yeah. the light, like like broke the light. And for him to say that is, I'm telling you, he's never done that, ever. So, so there's a good chance there's something kind of funky in there. He's right never there. said that. We searched the sub for visual evidence and came up empty. But when we started using the team's audio equipment to connect with the dead, the results were remarkable. 
I mean, what did, what did, well, what did you used to like to drink? Wine? Rum? Did someone say rum? Someone said rum. Yeah. Y'all? Rum. Okay, so we got one vote for rum. Rum. What year is it? What do you say? I just heard your name, Darren. Really? It was a first for the Unexplained Cases team. An EVP where one of our names was said from beyond, but the spirits weren't done yet. Can you tell us this card? Jack of Clubs! Oh, yep. Jack of Clubs! Oh, wow, wow, that was crazy. Jack of Clubs! All right. This seemed to be an intelligent haunting as the spirits answered our questions. Well, you're getting electronic voice phenomena in its purest form, so you're not using a microphone, and yet um, you are getting EVP. So. She was, we were remarking about the uh, jukebox and what was on it, and she asked, does it still work? And he said, yeah, it still works. And she's like, well, what kind of music is it playing? And her iPhone went off and said, I'm not frivolous. I'm not frivolous. I can't afford to be frivolous. Well, I, can't I can't afford, afford to, to be, be frivolous. frivolous. And then just turned off. And it turned off. <laughs> well, who can? I mean, really. You <laughs> talk about it. Man. I mean, that sucked, man. I don't know. <laughs> I was not, that was not cool. <laughs> you seem to be making kind of a connection. You had the weird noises no, and all your but phone. I, it could have been him, too. And Mark's in the room, too. So, I mean, it could be all three of us. Is that, is that, the, normal, is that the normal wish you use on your phone? Yeah, I don't want Siri. I want a dude. Okay. Wow. Okay. But, but you, had, you, had to, you had to command activate that, yeah, right? I'd have to touch it, though. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, or something. Say, hey, Siri. No. What's what's the guy's name? Hey, dude. What is it? I don't know. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, Bob. He's very, he's very, he's very upper English. Hey, hey hello. Yeah, I, I use the uh, English. Term. He's he's very proper. He's not like Cockney. Yeah. Yeah. That's if he changed the voice to a male. <laughs> 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 uh, he didn't go. Tell you what, you yeah, won't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But so, so in the English voice, you said, "I can't be uh, afford to be frivolous." Yeah, you? I swear to God, yeah. my phone just. I'm here. We're all talking. Right. It has not gone off, and I and I was like, well, you know, I was gonna put money in the jukebox. I was like, yeah, that's cool. Does it still work? And it just said, I, 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 I can't afford to be frivolous, and then turned off. Okay. That's crazy. Our night below deck on the USS Torsk was certainly eventful. The team encountered a possible shadow figure, and we heard voices from the dead. It seems like this piece of American naval history still has a few ghostly tales to tell from Baltimore Harbor. For Unexplained Cases, I'm Darren Dito.